Well, hello everybody. Welcome to your first organic chemistry lab, virtual lab. Today we're going to be setting up the uh, isolation of trimeristin by extraction with methyl tert-butyl ether. Uh, so we're in the lab here, and we're going to be working in this hood number 10. Uh, so the first thing we're going to want to do is to set up our ring stand um, with a couple of clamps and get our glassware ready. So the clamps are in a drawer over on the other side of the lab. Next to the oven here in the balance. And we're gonna want one of these single jawed clamps for the flask itself. And then for the upper part, we're gonna want one of these three jawed clamps that allows us to move the condenser in and out and a clamp holder for it to sit on. Oh, and we're also going to need an iron ring for later on, so I'll grab that iron ring while I'm over here. So there are six drawers in each organic lab, and they should be labeled A for the top left and B for the top right, C for the middle left, D for the uh, middle right, and then E and F. And in drawer F is where you'll find things like hot plates and uh, dishes. So we're going to grab one of these stirring hot plates, which will allow us to heat and stir our material. And we'll run the cord through here so that it doesn't get in our way, and plug that into one of these outlets here. There are two different kinds of outlets in the organic hood. This one is connected directly to power, and these down here below the hood are connected with an on-off switch to a variable voltage controller here that allows us to put zero through 100% of the voltage through. You'll notice the other kind of stir plate that was in the drawer here is a small round one and has no on-off switch. So this one we plug in down here and use the on-off switch and the variable voltage. Whereas the blue one here actually has an on-off switch, and I'll turn it on and just verify that the light goes green, which means it's working, and the stirrer and the heater are turned all the way off. So I'm going to be using this clamp to clamp my flask. And then this clamp here has a V-shaped piece. The V-shaped piece is designed to go on the upright of the ring stand and then the adjustable clamp will sit kind of on top of this little shelf where it can move back and forth and I'll be able to adjust that to the right length uh, when I need it. The uh, iron ring is going to be used to hold a funnel when we do our filtration so I'm just setting that aside for now. So what I need now is I need a 50 milliliter round bottom flask and drawer C, which is the middle left, is the drawer that has all the uh, glassware of the size we're going to be using right now. So if you look at one of these flasks, you see this one's 50 milliliters, and up here you see a little T with an S over it. That stands for standard taper, and it's 19 over 22, which means that it's 19 millimeters across, and it's 22 millimeters long. So any standard taper 1922 glass will fit together nicely and create a reasonably tight seal. Right? The ground glass joints fit. If you twist them, they may get stuck. So you just kind of want to set it in there rather than twisting it. So we need the condenser and we need the 50 milliliter round bottom flask. And we have these little flask holders that allow us to put a round bottom flask in and hold it up right. And the other thing we need is a thermometer adapter, which actually comes in two pieces. It's a glass piece here tells you that it's the standard taper 1922 on it and then a rubber piece that goes on top. That thermometer adapter is going to be used to hold a drying tube and it's likely that last year drying tubes were left in the desiccators in the middle cabinet. When you uh, pull a desiccator you want to hold it firmly to make sure it doesn't fall and then slide the top off and we have a drying tube here with calcium chloride in it that will prevent water from getting into our flask. 
The other thing we're going to need out of this cabinet is some condenser hoses to run the cooling water through our condenser. We want these latex hoses that have a fairly large opening. There's another type of latex hose here that has a much smaller opening, which isn't appropriate for what we need. And we're going to need two of those hoses with that large opening to use for our condenser. So the drying tube will simply go into the rubber part of the thermometer adapter and then that can sit on top of our condenser. We'll need a hot bath. We're going to use a water bath in one of these crystallizing dishes. If we were wanting to heat it hotter and use sand, we wouldn't want to use a crystallizing dish. We'd actually want to use a metal dish. And then we're going to put a couple of boiling stones in just to make sure that the water doesn't boil out of control. And those are in uh, door B here where you see the graduated cylinders and test tubes and thermometers and things like that. The stir bar that we need is in this uh, uh, plastic container. It's a football shaped stir bar right, designed to fit nicely into the bottom of a round bottom flask. And then there's another one in here that has spin vanes, which are designed to fit nicely into a conical vial where the point is down at the bottom, which we'll be using later. So I'm going to take my magnetic stir bar and put it into the, oops, drop it on the floor first, put it into the round bottom flask, and you'll notice that if I turn on the stirrer, that spin vane, or that stir bar turns nicely in the bottom of the flask. So this flask is going to be clamped tightly. And centered on the hot plate so that when I put my water bath in there, it'll be submerged in the water bath. I'm going to fill this about half full, maybe a little bit more than half full. And since we're only heating to the boiling point of methyl terpbutyl ether, MTBE, has a boiling point of about 57 degrees, a water bath will suffice. So now I want to set the condenser in there, and then I'm going to adjust this clamp. You always want to tighten the clamp. The first, first one you want to tighten is the one that attaches it to the iron or to the ring stand. The second thing you want to tighten is the length of the clamp, and then the last thing you tighten is where it's actually going to attach itself to the condenser. Because when you turn these, you sometimes change the position when you turn these two, and you don't want to have it clamped tight to the condenser and then change the position and snap off the joint at the end. I'm going to point these away from me, and so that has my, my condenser in approximately the right position. But before I actually clamp that in there, I'm going to actually put the condenser hoses on. It's much easier to put the condenser hoses on the condenser when it's not attached to the assembly. So we're going to be running cooling water through the outer jacket of this condenser so that the inner jacket, right, as, it, as you look up through the inner jacket, uh, the methyl terbutyl ether can evaporate and then recondense on the inside of this and drip back in the flask. The inner jacket and the outer jacket are disconnected, right? so we won't get any of the water from the outer jacket into our uh, into our product. They slide on much more easily if you wet them first, so I'm wetting this in a little bit of water, and then I'm just going to twist and slide that on there, try to get it on as far as I can, maybe get a little bit more water, so I want to get a nice tight seal so that that doesn't accidentally pop off when I don't want it to. And then put the other one attached to the top joint. So those are on there pretty firmly. And then you're going to connect the lower end to the cooling water so that as you run water through, it actually is forced to fill and expel the air. So that joint's going to go on the water. Now I can attach this condenser 
and clamp it tightly. And that will allow me to raise and lower the condenser without adjusting the flask so I can tip it in the back. And then there's a little weight here. I'm going to attach the weight here so that I can make sure that this doesn't fly out of the sink when I don't want it to. And I usually, I like to run it back behind so that I can actually see the water flowing. Okay. So that setup will be pretty nice, ready for action. I can start this cooling water now if I want to. Right, it's only filling the outer jacket, it's not actually going through there. And I like to have that where I can see the flow rate. Because you don't really want it to be too uh, powerful so that you pop one of these hoses off. So it looks like I've got a good assembly there, it's not leaking anywhere. I can turn that off for now. The drying tube is going to go on top, and to make sure it doesn't fly off, I'm going to go into drawer B here and grab one of these blue things, which is called a Keck clip. And the Keck clip clips on to the 1922 joint with the larger part of the ring on the large part here and the smaller part on the inside. And that just snaps on like that. And that prevents you from accidentally pulling this off. And so the, the uh, drying tube is now firmly attached and won't separate from the uh, flask or from the condenser. So now I need to get to my nutmeg and I'm going to use a big weighing boat like this because I'm weighing out a pretty large quantity. And there are three types of spatula. There's the micro spatula here for weighing out very small quantities. It's got a little V in it. There's like a regular size spatula. This one is very useful for scraping things out of the bottom of round bottom flasks. And then there's this larger scoop. I'm weighing out a lot so I'm going to use the large scoop. And I'm going to use this nutmeg here. It's not actually from Encore Gourmet. It's really from Trade East Spices and Seasonings. Uh, that's where we purchased it and then we refilled these bottles uh, from the stock. So Trade East Spices and Seasonings is where our nutmeg came from. And now we're going to go over to the balance. You've used these before in general chemistry. I can put my uh, weighing boat in there and tear it so that it's zero. And then I can mass out about four grams. We don't have to know exactly how much, it, or we don't have to weigh out exactly four grams but we do have to know exactly how much we did weigh out because we're going to calculate a percent recovery uh, based on how much trimeristin we get from the nutmeg powder. So by opening the two sides, I can make sure that there's not much travel and thus avoid spilling it. And I want about four grams, 4.311. That sounds like a good amount. That's approximately four grams, good enough. If you want a really accurate reading, you should close these so there's no airflow. And it looks like 4.311 grams of nutmeg, which you'll want to write down in your lab notebook. If you do spill, next to the balance we have a paintbrush, and that paintbrush can be used to simply remove any spillage from the balance. And now I'm going to tear it again so it's re-zeroed. So, that's my nutmeg, 4.311 grams. And now I just need to transfer this into my round bottom flask. So I'm gonna raise the condenser up and get it so that it's out of the way. Make sure that's firmly on there. And I'm simply going to fold the weighing boat. And 
and use my spatula to help that not bag into the flask. And I'm going to try to get as quantitative a transfer as I can. So I've got my nutmeg transferred into the flask. So I've got my stir bar and my nutmeg in there. The next thing I want to do is add somewhere around 20 milliliters, 20 to 25 milliliters. We're going to about half fill the flask. So I'm using my 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. And that looks like that's about 22 milliliters. Again, it's not critical. We need to know exactly how much we used, but it's not critical that we use exactly 20. And I'm just going to rinse that down the walls of the flask a little bit to displace any of the nutmeg that I may have spilled. So we have our flask charged with our magnetic stir bar, the 4.311 grams of nutmeg, and 22 milliliters of the uh, methyl terbutyl ether. It's not really necessary to wash this. That's a volatile solvent. I'm just going to shake it out a little bit and let's set it aside to evaporate before I put it away. Then I'm going to clamp this in there. The speedy way of clamping this is to hold the jaws shut and then you can just freely spin that. Get that nicely clamped. Now I'm going to put my condenser back in. Clamp that tight. I'll loosen this a little bit. So that I can get everything else clamped. Clamp that tightly. And then clamp this tightly. See how that moves when I, move, when I adjust that clamp? I don't want these tightly on the condenser when I move it that way. The last thing I want to do is tighten that. So I have my assembly. I'm going to set it in this water bath. And I've got it so that just the bottom part is submerged. You can see that about eh, two-thirds or so of the liquid is submerged underneath the bath.